on the termite mound itself. There we go. What's that in the middle of the mound? There we go. So there's the spots. That is Tumba. Now he is standing up, which is good news. Maybe he's going to start coming our way and coming and moving in our direction. Now I know it's very far away and it's not the best view, but unfortunately that's inside Little Gari. So we're trying to just get the best sort of view that we can at this stage. And you can see he's quite a long way away. And hopefully I'm going to sort of reserve hope that if he's standing up that he might decide to come up and move into this direction where we are now there's a little pan close to us and a little bit of water and so maybe he's going to come and have a morning drink and move in this direction you see he's a bit of yawning going on so it's possible that he is going to move it's often an indication when cats yawn uh, James well Tumba and Shungile spending time together is an interesting one. I'm not 100% sure why, and it's one of those things in the bush that sometimes we're just not going to have a clear sort of indication as to why it's happening. But I would imagine that being both young leopards, they still crave that sort of um, companionship. And when Tumba is on his own and Mom is off hunting, and now obviously we know Shungile spends most of her time on her own and away from her sana, it means that maybe she just craves a bit of companionship and being another young leopard, they are very tolerant of one another and there's no aggression shown and that's why they keep hanging around together. And if it was a situation where you found a very small cub, then there would be a very different response from the mother. So from Tandi, she wouldn't allow that young leopard to be so close if it was a tiny young male cub but given that he's quite big now and he kind of can fend for himself I would imagine that's why they don't worry too much and don't have too much stress now he is coming down the mound by the looks of it oh don't go that way come this way come on yes there we go good boy look at him isn't he just the most beautiful leopard now what have you spotted Seems like he's spotted something. Look, you see he's going stalking now? Now that is typical of a young individual. Stalk mode. I wonder if he's not spotted something like a squirrel. Because I don't see anything between us and him. And he's looking kind of into the grass or into the tree almost. So I wonder if there's not a little squirrel or a mongoose or something that's moving around in this area that he's busy trying to watch. What have you seen, young man? But he's in definite stalk mode now. He's gotten to a point where he's kind of... Look, there he goes, there he goes. What are you chasing? Oh, birds. <laughs> he was chasing Franklin's. You silly boy, you were too slow with that. But that is the youthful side of it. So getting back to sort of Shongila and Tamba, I would imagine that it's more just a companion thing. So as soon as... Tundi leaves, he kind of craves that companion and given that she's another little female he knows that he's bigger than her and so he's not going to be nervous of her and in the same right she's had this bigger brother all her life and so she's really not too worried about him and because there's no aggression between the two of them that's why they obviously sort of hang around together. It would also be from probably a food point of view you finding a situation where both of them are coming across food and maybe one is trying to sort of steal from the other or feed off the other as that's what they've done all their lives as young individuals. They've shared with either their mom or their um, sibling and so it makes it a lot sort of easier now he is moving slowly towards us come on Tumba keep coming this way because you're coming the right way now but isn't he beautiful he's really really one of the most striking looking leopards that I've seen he's not massive in terms of size he's got big ears and big paws but he's not massive but he's striking in that he's very very dark and he's got these dark markings all over him so Tiki Best you're wondering if the cats would change their normal route um, because of the vehicles or behavior well no because if if they have then us as guides have failed because it means we've cut off that individual or we've chased that animal away from the path that it was walking on. Most of these cats that you see here are very habituated to our presence. So they're very used to us being here and they know that the vehicles are not a huge, huge um, threat to them. And so that's why they kind of move around. The only way that you'd make them change direction is if you actually sort of 
drove towards them in some way. Now it looks like he's going back up onto his mound, but look how beautiful he is in the sun. Now the difference is, is when we see individuals that come from the Kruger area, let's say that are not followed off road, they would definitely change their direction because of a vehicle. They're not used to this big hunking great piece of metal that follows them off the road and you'll find then that they get a little bit kind of nervous of it and will try and run into a thicket to go and hide. But in this area, no, the, the leopards here will generally not move around and not really worry about us too much they continue on their path even if a vehicle is very close by and that's why we'll sometimes see them kind of doing these walk bys and moving right past us as they go Tumba, come back this side seems like he's going to go back to his mound where he's going to probably reposition himself and decide that's where he wants to be for the morning let me maybe go a little bit forward for you Craig because it's a slight better gap where I am it's nice of him at least to come out a little bit so that we could see him. So that should be a bit better, Craig. At least we'll be able to get a clearer view between those trees, I think. Let's see. We might. I might be wrong, but it looks like it's a little bit better. But you can see he really is quite far away. What are you watching? Now this is typical behavior of a young boy. When they are, or young cub should we say, when their mom is not away, at this age they're starting to develop these hunting instincts and hunting skills and they spot things that move around them and sheer boredom basically comes into play. So after spending, who knows, maybe three, four hours like this and mom still hasn't come back, now something moves and rustles in the grass near them and he knows that he can't go too far but still he wants to try and sort of hunt and try and see what's going on and that's why he's trying to chase these things. And then you see once he's done back to his mound where he can watch and see what's going on. Now as a young leopard it's very common to find them in higher areas. So you'll find them in trees or termite mounds when their mom is not away because it's a great place for them to be able to watch around and see if there is any potential threat coming. So anything like a hyena or maybe another leopard that could potentially come. We know that Tingana wasn't too far away and was moving in this area. So from that elevated position he would be able to spot what's going on and then be able to come down and move away should that be the case. So it's a very clever position for a young leopard to be in and a very good instinct that he has. But look at how he blends in. Isn't that amazing? Now, if you came driving past here, imagine trying to spot that. It is almost impossible. There is this sort of cat that is there, but the pattern that it's got has broken up that outline and has made it almost impossible to see. He's just sort of lying there. And if he drops his head down, it would be virtually impossible. Now I can hear some elephants also behind me. So I heard some elephants trumpeting. I wonder if that's not Tingana that's starting to move again and the elephants have seen him. So we're going to sit here for a little bit longer and see maybe Tingana shows up and we end up in a situation where we get him too. And if not, we'll go and investigate the elephants down by the water. And while we do all of that, let's go back to Ali and see what her plans are for the rest of the morning.